President Donald Trump has warned Theresa May that her soft Brexit plan would kill a deal between the US and Britain on trade in an incendiary interview as his visit to Britain begins. He also said the Prime Minister has ignored his advice on Brexit negotiations explaining I would have done it differently. Talking to the Sun before his trip to Britain, he said if they do a deal like that we would be dealing with the European Union instead of dealing with the UK so it will probably kill the deal. I actually told Theresa May how to do it but she didn't listen to me. Sources close to the president earlier warned that a lucrative transatlantic trade deal would be impossible if the UK keeps close ties with Brussels effectively meaning Britain must choose between the US and EU. In an interview with a British newspaper Mr Trump said he thought Boris Johnson would make a great prime minister and that he was saddened the former foreign secretary was out of the government. The president also renewed his war of words with Sadiq Khan saying the London mayor has done a very bad job on terrorism. He said he thought that allowing millions and millions of people into Europe was very sad and pointed to crime being brought into London criticizing the Labour mayor for failing to deal with it. Europe, he added, is losing its culture because of mass migration and warned it will never be the same again unless leaders act quickly. You go through certain areas that DIDNT exist 10 or 15 years ago. Look around, he said. He added, allowing the immigration to take place in Europe is a shame. U.S. President Donald Trump and First Lady Melania Trump are welcomed at Blenheim Palace by Britain Prime Minister Theresa May and her husband Philip May from left. First Lady Melania Trump, President Donald Trump, British Prime Minister Theresa May and her husband Philip May watched during the arrival ceremony at Blenheim Palace awkwardly grabbing Theresa May hand in a replay of their White House meeting last year. Trump was treated to a fanfare welcome by the Scots. Irish and Welsh Guards bands President Trump's wife Melania wore a floor-length pleated buttercup yellow gown for her first visit to Britain as First Lady President Trump and his wife walked hand-in-hand -hand to Marine One which flew them from London to the evening's gala dinner U.S. First Lady Melania Trump. U.S. President Donald Trump, Britain's Prime Minister Theresa May and her husband Philip May stand on steps in the Great Court watching and listening to the bands of the Scots. Irish and Welsh guards perform a ceremonial welcome Theresa May has used a lavish welcome dinner for Donald Trump at Blenheim Palace to press her case for an ambitious new trade deal with the US after Brexit Britain and the US are the largest investors in each other's economies. With over a trillion dollars of investments between them, said Mrs May, left with her husband, right with Trump, Panther, bandsman from the Scots. Welsh and Irish guards welcomed the presidential party to Blenheim Palace last night dignitaries including International Trade Minister Liam Fox Centre awaited the president's arrival for the Blenheim dinner discussing protests including the decision by anti-Trump activists to fly a giant blimp of the president wearing a nappy over the capital he said they made him feel unwelcome in London. He added that he used to love the city but now feels little reason to go there because of the animosity directed towards him. But he did say he respected the Queen, telling the son she is a tremendous woman who has never made any embarrassing mistakes. And the President also said he loves the UK and believes the British people want the same thing I want. It comes after Theresa May used a lavish welcome dinner for Trump at Lenin Palace to press her case for an ambitious new trade deal with the US after Brexit. Trump arrived in Marine One in a tuxedo alongside First Lady Melania, wearing a floor-length pleated buttercup yellow gown. Awkwardly grabbing Theresa May's hand in a replay of their White House meeting last year, Trump was treated to a fanfare welcome by the Welsh, Irish and Scots Guards bands. The president was given a performance of Amazing Grace featuring a bagpipe solo during his red carpet reception as well as Liberty fanfare and the national emblem. Critics of the Prime Minister's proposals for future relations with the EU claim that her willingness to align with Brussels' rules on agricultural produce will block a US deal. That is because Washington is certain to insist on the inclusion of GM crops and hormone-enhanced beef, which are banned in Europe. But addressing the U.S. president in front of an audience of business leaders at Winston Churchill's birthplace, Mrs. May insisted that Brexit provides an opportunity for an unprecedented agreement to boost jobs and growth. Noting that more than one million Americans already work for British-owned firms, she told Mr. Trump, as we prepare to leave the European Union, we have an unprecedented opportunity to do more. In an apparent plea to the president to remember his allies when he meets Vladimir Putin in Helsinki in Monday, May noted that Britain and America work closely together in the interests of their shared security. Whether through targeting Daesh terrorists or standing up to Russian aggression Mrs May said that the history, language, values and culture shared by the UK and US inspire mutual respect and make the two nations not just the closest of allies. President Donald Trump and First Lady Melania Trump at Blenheim Palace this evening it's an opportunity to reach a free trade agreement that creates jobs and growth here in the UK and right across the United States but the dearest of friends a member of security cleans the limousine of US. It's also an opportunity to tear down the bureaucratic barriers that frustrate business leaders on both sides of the Atlantic. And it's an opportunity to shape the future of the world through cooperation in advanced technology such as artificial intelligence. She also highlighted the importance of transatlantic business links to a president who has sometimes seemed more interested in forging new links with former adversaries around the world than nurturing long-standing partnerships.
related articles previous one two next Trump shows off very nice note from Kim Jong-un asking for. M is on a Razan with two nominations despite racism. The Donald arrives for four-day red carpet visit. Trump and police chief admits Stormy Daniels should never have been. Share this article share Britain and the US are the largest investors in each other's economies with over a trillion dollars of investment between them, said Mrs. May. And she told the president the strength and breadth of Britain's contribution to the US economy cannot be understated. The UK is the largest investor in the US, providing nearly a fifth of all foreign investment in your country. And more than France and Germany combined, more than 20 times what China invests. We invest 30% more than our nearest rival. That all means a great deal more than simply numbers in bank accounts. The Duke of Marlborough, James Spencer Churchill, write in both photos above, with his son the Marquis of Blandford, who both welcomed the Trumps to their ancestral home Blenheim Palace Defense Secretary Gavin Williamson arrives in a tuxedo at Blenheim Palace as President Donald Trump is given a formal welcome guests are expected to enjoy a meal of Scottish salmon, English beef and a desert of strawberries and cream. Pictured, William Hague arrives Foreign Secretary Jeremy Hunt and his wife Lucia arrive at Blenheim Palace, Oxfordshire, for a dinner hosted by Prime Minister Theresa May for President Donald Trump it means jobs. British firms represented at the Blenheim Banquet alone employ more than 250,000 people in the US, she said, opportunities and wealth for hard-working people right across America. Mr. Trump earlier made clear that he did not approve of the softer stance the PM has been advocating despite fury from many Tory MPs. Brexit is Brexit, the people voted to break it up so I would imagine that is what they'll do, but they might take a different route, I'm not sure that's what people voted for, Mr. Trump said. Mrs. May dismissed the criticism as she departed the summit this afternoon telling journalists we have come to an agreement at the proposal we're putting to the European Union which absolutely delivers on the Brexit people voted for. They voted for us to take back control of our money, our law and our borders and that's exactly what we will do. The presidential helicopter Marine One ferried the Trumps from the U.S. ambassador's residence in London to Blenheim Palace protesters gathered at the security fence watch as U.S. President Donald Trump and U.S. First Lady Melania Trump leave in Marine One from the U.S. ambassador's residence. Winfield House several protesters hold up their placards outside Blenheim Palace where President Donald Trump will have dinner tonight anti-Trump activists gather outside the ring of steel fence put up to secure the president when he stays in Regent's Park. London the protesters promised to create a wall of sound outside the official U.S. ambassador's residence. Above, a woman strikes a colander with a ladle while others hold up signs expressing disapprobation of the president. Mr. Trump also said the U.K. was a pretty hot spot right now with lots of resignations. Brexit is I have been reading about Brexit a lot over the last few days and it seems to be turning a little bit differently where they are getting at least partially involved back with the European Union, he said. I have no message it is not for me to say he added I'd like to see them be able to work it out so it can go quickly whatever they work out. When you use the term hard Brexit I assume that's what you mean I would say Brexit is Brexit. A lot of people voted to break it up so I would imagine that's what they would do but maybe they are taking a little bit of a different route. I am sure there will be protests because there are always protests I just want the people to be happy I don't know if that's what they voted for. Speaking about the prospect of demonstrations in the UK over his visit, Mr. Trump told reporters, they like me a lot in the UK, I think they agree with me on immigration. Angry anti-Trump activists hauled up signs and bang pots and calendars outside the US Ambassador's Regent's Park residence he added, I think that's why Brexit happened. Mrs. May was joined at Blenheim by ministers including Chancellor Philip Hammond. Foreign Secretary Jeremy Hunt, Defense Secretary Gavin Williamson, Trade Secretary Liam Fox, Business Secretary Greg Clark, Transport Secretary Chris Grayling and her effective Deputy David Lidington. Boris Johnson missed out on a seat at the table by resigning as Foreign Secretary on Monday in protest at Mrs. May's Brexit policy, though Mr. Trump has said he might try to speak to him during his visit. Mrs. May, dressed in an ankle-length thread gown and red high-heeled shoes, and her husband Philip, in black tie, welcomed Mr. Trump and wife Melania to the gala dinner on the first evening of the President's working visit to the UK. In a near replay of their famous hand-holding at the White House, the President briefly took Mrs. May's hand as they went up the stairs into the palace. Mrs. Trump was dressed in a floor-length yellow bowl gown. The Trumps arrived from London by Marine One helicopter before being driven in the armoured presidential limousine, nicknamed the Beast, to the opulent 18th-century palace near Woodstock in Oxfordshire. Built for the Duke of Marlborough in recognition of his military victories and named a UNESCO World Heritage Site, Lenham is one of a series of historic architectural gems Mr. Trump will visit on a four-day trip. His arrival was marked by a military ceremony with bandsmen of the Scots, Irish and Welsh guards playing the Liberty Fanfare, Amazing Grace and the National Emblem. Leaders of the financial services, travel, creative, food, engineering, technology, infrastructure, pharmaceutical and defense sectors were among around 100 guests who dined on Scottish salmon, English Hereford beef fillet and strawberries with clotted cream ice cream. Mrs. May told him, Mr. President, Sir Winston Churchill once said that to have the United States at our side was, to me, the greatest joy. 
the spirit of friendship and cooperation between our countries, our leaders and our people, that most special of relationships, has a long and proud history. Now, for the benefit of all our people, let us work together to build a more prosperous future. Mrs May said that the history, language, values and culture shared by the UK and US inspire mutual respect and make the two nations not just the closest of allies, but the dearest of friends. Blenheim's glorious history, from 18th century gift to a victorious general to birthplace of Winston Churchill presented by Queen Anne to the Duke of Marlborough. The astonishing Oxfordshire pile has seen everything from Sir Winston Churchill's birth in 1874 to two world wars in which it acted both as a military hospital and a college for boys. John Churchill in 1704, Blenheim Palace has always been a symbol of British pride. Churchill, who also married his wife Clementine Hosier at the palace once said, At Blenheim I took two very important decisions, to be born and to marry. I am content with the decision I took on both occasions. The Baroque-style site set in 11,500 acres was listed as a World Heritage Site by UNESCO in 1987 and is owned by 13 trustees including Sir Rocco Forte of Rocco Forte Hotels. Currently the 12th Duke of Marlborough, Jamie Blandford and his family live in a section of the palace, although he does not appear to be on the board of trustees. The astonishing Oxfordshire pile has seen everything from Sir Winston Churchill's birth in 1874 to two world wars in which it acted both as a military hospital and a college for boys Churchill who also married his wife Clementine Hosier at the palace once said, At Blenheim I took two very important decisions, to be born and to marry. In more recent years, Blenheim has been used as a set in a number of blockbuster films. I am content with the decision I took on both occasions. The famous Harry Potter tree that appeared in Sever U. Snape's flashback scene in Harry Potter and the Order of a Phoenix still stands in the palace grounds, despite fears the ancient cedar had developed a deadly disease two years ago. The palace's additional film credits include the James Bond film, Spectre 007, in which it doubled as Rome's Palazzo Cadenza and Mission Impossible Rogue Nation, in which the building's green writing room acted as the set for a crucial meeting between the British Prime Minister and a secret agent. Perhaps Mission Impossible's location team were inspired by the events of September 1940 when MI5 used Blenheim Palace as a real-life base. Originally called Woodstock Manor, the land was given to the first Duke of Marlborough by the British in recognition of an English victory over the French in the War of the Spanish Succession. A column of victory stands central to the 2,000 acres of parkland and 90 acres of formal garden landscaped by Lancelot Capability Brown. Meanwhile the magnificent Baroque Palace was designed by Sir John Vaughanborough who reportedly aimed to create a naturalistic Versailles. At 134 feet tall the monument depicts the first Duke of Marlborough as a Roman general. In an apparent plea to the president to remember his allies when he meets Vladimir Putin in Helsinki in Monday, she noted that Britain and America work closely together in the interests of their shared security. The Countess of Wessex's orchestra played British and American hits of the 20th century during dinner, whether through targeting Daesh terrorists or standing up to Russian aggression. And Mr. Trump, whose mother was Scottish, was due to be piped out by the Royal Regiment of Scotland as he and Melania left to spend the night at the U.S. Ambassador's residence in London's Regent's Park. Outside the palace gates, several hundred protesters waved banners and placards reading Dump Trump, not welcome here, protect children, not Trump and keep your tiny hands off my pee. Trump touched down in Britain for his first official visit early yesterday. After landing at Stansted Airport he said, I think they like me a lot in the UK most people. A number of whom said they worked at the embassy in London but tight-lipped as they left a secured area in the park near the US ambassador's residence where Mr. Trump and his wife Melania stayed overnight. But one woman said Mr. Trump had given a short speech which she described as lovely. Some cited job restrictions while another said he was wary of the press. U.S. President Donald Trump and First Lady Melania were given a guard of honor by the RAF after arriving in the U.K. today. Earlier President Trump and Melania walked from Air Force One as they landed at Stansted Airport this afternoon. Britain's most elite counter-terrorism police unit CTSFO were also shadowing the U.S. President during his high-profile stay the exterior of the Trump Arms Public House in West London. Formerly named the Jameson, which has embraced the arrival of U.S. President Donald Trump, Damian Smith, from County Antrim in Northern Ireland, runs the establishment. There are best friends in the world, he told the newspaper, America is our biggest ally, they'd be the ones here first if something went wrong, not Germany, not France. I think these people protesting his visit are rude and insulting Donald Trump raises his fist in the air as he lands at the U.S. Ambassador's historic London home at the start of his four-day tour. Noreen one carrying the Donald and his wife passes the BT Tower and comes in to land at the U.S. Ambassador's central London residence this afternoon. Another man, who did not wish to give his name, said it was very complimentary to England and to the Allies that we have very positive. The U.S. President, 72, who will meet the Prime Minister and Queen during a four-day red carpet visit, landed at Stansted Airport on Air Force One at just before 2 p.m. and walked off hand-in-hand -hand with First Lady Melania.
America's commander-in-chief has 1,000 of his own stuff in the UK and a giant motorcade led by his bomb-proof Cadillac nicknamed the Beast as well as multiple helicopters including Marine One to fly him around. The President and his First Lady were met on the tarmac by US Ambassador Woody Johnson and UK Trade Secretary Liam Fox before he was whisked off to Mr. Johnson's house near Regent's Park. Earlier Mr. Trump gave an extraordinary press conference in Brussels after giving NATO leaders a bruising over defense cash where he wrote off protesters and said Theresa May's Brexit deal probably wasn't what Britons voted for. A lot of people like me there. When asked about the threat of mass demonstrations he said I think it's fine. I think that's why Brexit happened. I think they agree with me on immigration. Donald Trump salutes the U.S. Marines who flew him from Stansted to Regent's Park in London on the first day of his four-day tour. Mr. Trump and Melania hold hands and talk to U.S. Ambassador Woody Johnson who will give them a place to stay tonight Marine One. The President's helicopter is one of a large number of aircraft he has brought with him for the British visit, shown here landing with him inside, his aerial entourage followed him, and included an Osprey helicopter carrying elite troops from the US Marine Corps protecting him in the UK. Protesters meanwhile staged a noisy gathering near Winfield House where Trump and his wife Melania spent the night. A large group of demonstrators adopted an alternative version of England's World Cup anthem three lines as they sang and shouted, He's going home, he's going home, he's going, Trump is going home in Regent's Park. A wide range of campaigners including unions, faith and environmental groups came together to unite in opposition to Mr. Trump's visit to the UK, organizers said. Bells and whistles rang out alongside cheers and claps for speakers throughout the protest staged near the US ambassador's official residence as the crowd was encouraged to shout loudly in the hope Mr. Trump could hear. Placards including Dump Trump and Trump Not Welcome were held aloft by the enthusiastic crowd before some began banging on the metal fence which has been erected in the park. A clip of what organizers said was the sound of children crying at the U.S. border after being separated from their parents was played and described by those listening as disgusting. Donald Trump's motorcade speed through Regent's Park led by elite British police from Scotland Yard Marine One comes into land at the U.S. Ambassador's central London residence this afternoon which sits next door to the London Central Mosque in Regent's Park. Minaret pictured days of protest are planned for the Donald's visit, including a march through central London tomorrow and everywhere. He is visiting the nuclear football. The suitcase containing the United States nuclear codes is shown being carried by a member of Trump's entourage after the president landed in Stansted. This giant and controversial Trump balloon showing the world leader in a nappy will be flying over London this weekend. Sam Fullerton from Oklahoma said while Mr. Trump may not see the protest from Winfield House which is set back inside the fenced-off area in the park. Mr. Fullerton said he watches a lot of TV so he'll see it on TV. He hoped he would hear it or see it on television. His wife Jami, a Hillary Clinton supporter, said the protest was democracy at its finest, or they may be out in the backyard. I'm here to witness democracy outside of our own country to see how other democratic societies express themselves, she said. John Rees of the Stop the War group described Mr. Trump as a wrecking ball as he addressed those gathered. The British are pretty gentle people, I think it's great. He said, he's a wrecking ball for race relations, he's a wrecking ball for prosperity, he's a wrecking ball for women's rights, he's a wrecking ball for any peace and justice in this world and we have to stop him. Some of those gathered said they planned to stay for Mr. Trump's return after the first couple dine at Blenheim Palace with Theresa May.